Hi, today I have some mega adapters, 320 and 480 watts of power, 480 watts and a little compact USB power brick. That's absolutely amazing. And several people did request this. I was hesitant to say anything without testing it. How much power? That's enough power to run a gaming PC. Is it too much power for a little adapter or are these the next best thing on the market? Let's all hope they can live up to the hype. Spoiler, they're junk, but you knew that already, right? These two are similar in that they offer a lot of USB ports and claim some big wattage outputs. The distribution of ports is different and the way they market them, they don't renegotiate and each port can supply a maximum power level, which is crazy and awesome. The modes of operation are different. One of them tops out at 100 watts per port and the other one says it can do 65 watts per port for the more powerful USB-C ports. Then they both have a selection of lower powered USB ports, either A or C. It is a lot to look at and a lot to check out. How far off the mark is the real question. Efficiency, voltages, and more will be checked throughout the video. It is gonna get technical, so ask questions if you have them. There is an affiliate link, which earns me a couple percent, but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. The Rokerin 480 watt is up first. This adapter is compact and lightweight and has a ton of modes of operation and on paper looks amazing. It feels like a legitimate product and I've looked at some others from this company and they were fine. This one, however, has some red flags. I'm not gonna get into it too much because I don't really wanna reinforce what's wrong. In general, there are a few things I look for on a power adapter. The safety listing, of course, is a main feature. This is usually some other company's marking on a device. This mark is usually an indication that the device will fail more safely and generally won't cause harm to the user. This device lacks that, and it also lacks a six in a circle, which at this power level isn't generally included anyway. It could still comply with the requirements, but that will get checked out in the data section. If you dig into the rating, you find that the numbers don't match the numbers they claim. Then you can do some basic math on the rated input current, which is a maximum value. So 3.85 amps in this case, which would be at the worst case line voltage, 100 volts, would be 385 volt amps. If the power factor is high, that's 385 watts at the input, assuming 92% efficiency, will be generous. It's small and light, so it pretty much has to be. That means about 350 watts of output power. That again assumes good power factor. You know, right? Upon plugging the adapter in, the idle power consumption is too high. When looking at the general stats for this unit, it's got a lot going for it on paper, lots of modes of operation, lots of USB ports, which renegotiate like older USB adapters. So the port power level claims are not true nor continuous and certainly not additive. The efficiency is low, but the cost is very good for a power adapter like this. And looking at the detailed data for this device, it is showing its cheapness and that it has very high ripple voltage as you start to draw more power from it. This kind of indicates it's being pushed a little too hard at the 250 watt output power level. Even at this point, ports randomly drop power level, so it's on the line. I've tried lots of combos of USB cables and loads, and this is what I could get at least semi stably out of it. The ripple will get much worse, like several volts at just a watt or two more on any port. I can also see low power quality, which means no power factor correction. So I can redo the math now. 100 volts times 3.85 amps times 0.55 power factor times 89% efficiency is about 206 watts of output. At 250, it's basically all the ports in overload, but it did do it and it's about half the claimed 480 watts, which isn't even the sum of the ports. It's just a made up number. Well, that was a bucket of joy. Let's see what's next. The word soup, Mechiogeo. Yeah, I had to phonetically spell that out. 320 watt USB power adapter. This adapter is a bit different in that it has four USB-C ports and three USB-A ports. The port numbers don't make sense based on the claims right off the bat. Not a surprise, really. No safety listing, no efficiency mark. The unique thing about this adapter is it has an aluminum housing. I'm not sure that's a good thing. In looking at the very basic user manual, they mention some of the ports and modes, but it's pretty much meaningless. We can apply the same math to the input power, and you know, it doesn't have power factor, not a surprise at this price point. So it's 100 volts times 2.5 amps times 
0.6 power factor times 91% efficiency is about 140 watts of output power, same as 320. I was able to squeeze 145 watts out. Not bad, pretty close to 320 watts. I mean, I probably should just round up to the nearest thousand, so call it a thousand watts. The number doesn't mean anything. The charger has quite a list of features. The 12 volt mode is present. It has a programmable power supply mode, but the current is limited. It is fairly full featured for the price. It's insane. The efficiency and idle power consumption mean it actually does meet the energy efficiency requirements, even if just barely. Without power factor correction, this really wouldn't meet in real world conditions. I didn't bother testing on higher voltages with these, extra time to learn nothing. Often with no PFC, they do worse on higher voltage. The overall performance on this charger does show that its lower power output efficiency is low, but as it increases in power output, it gets better. The ripple is a little higher than some, but nothing compared with the other one in this video. So the data looks fine. It's just nowhere near a 320 watt charger, suffers USB power negotiation issues, and tops out at 65 watts per port, which is just fine for a bargain device. Okay, time to compare these chargers. These chargers are bigger chargers, but I'm going to compare to what I've tested for larger chargers. The Ugreen 300, the Anchor 240 watt, the Thunder Gun, a few others of course. These are big chargers, but there are obvious signs they don't meet the claims on the box, and there are so many other chargers now that are claiming numbers way beyond even these. If the price is too good to be true, and the size of the power supply is suspicious, it is 800 watts. There's a reason PC power supplies have big fans and lots of holes in the case. This is a whole bunch of nope, not hope. PFC, or power factor correction, as mentioned earlier in the video, is a technique to make sure the current consumed by the device is the same shape as the voltage. These circuits help improve efficiency, and it's important these line up at higher power levels like these chargers. Neither of these adapters have this, and even with my very precise power supply, the THD on the voltage side starts to get distorted. This means other devices plugged into the same line will see this. This generates voltage at higher than line frequencies, and these voltages will walk through a capacitive dropper circuit unimpeded, causing extra strain on the circuit, early failure, or an LED light bulb will think it's on a dimmer, flicker city. There will be power loss in moving extra current around, so the efficiency measured at the socket is actually a few percent worse through realistic household wiring. In terms of isolation, which is the thing separating the danger side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side, the word soup one is functional. The 480 watt one may give you a bit of a buzz. They could both be better, but neither showed any direct shorts at moderately low voltages of test. With no sign of any safety listing, I wouldn't expect these to hold up. In terms of weight and size, these are fairly compact and lightweight for the claimed power levels. A little too light and compact. Even the larger chargers, which still can't stay on and are more efficient and much heavier, these don't stand a chance. Plus the, you know, lying about the amount of watts they can do at any point and inconsistent marketing should be a red flag. By this logic, the Ugreen is four times 140 plus 100, yeah, 660 watts. They need to get their marketing team on it. Just add all the port maximums up. Maybe just say each port is the maximum USB capability, 240 watts. Yeah, 1000 watt power adapter, very nice. That's hyperbole if you didn't get it. In terms of value, yeah, they look great. Way better than anything else. This is based on the actual power they could produce too. So on paper, they are twice as good as shown here. Absolutely amazing value. Do some basic math. If this number comes out to seven or eight or 10 watts per dollar, it's probably too good to be true. Two to three watts per dollar seems expensive, but I've looked at a few USB adapters, it's realistic. The Ugreen is less expensive and got updated some, I need to update that. When looking at the idle graph for these, the Rokorin uses too much, and the other ones just make the cut for an energy efficiency mark, although not claiming to have it. I'm sure there is some unit to unit variation, so these may not all make the grade. There are a few that use too much at idle though. Once you get to this larger power level though, they don't really have to meet any criteria. The average power consumption graph is more spread out. The Apple and Thundergo achieve some high efficiency numbers, the much cheaper options still kind of do okay considering the price, but they're the worst of the bunch. Plus these numbers aren't real because of the lacking PFC, but you have to drop something with that price. I didn't bother with 230 volt or thermals. The extra time is not worth it. Conclusion time. 
So yeah, these are two more power adapters. I think it's a good idea to look at the lower end of the market to get an idea of how things are doing on the higher end of the market. It's sometimes a bit of the same thing over and over again when making these videos because they are all really close and generally meet all the claims. Well, today, these ones aren't even close to the claims. The marketing is even inconsistent, so you can find holes in the claims before you even buy one of these, and that's really the point of the video. Look, and yeah, do a little math on things like the rated input current, assuming good power factor, these can't meet the rated claims. And check the value. Sometimes it is too good to be true. Are there bargains or sales? Yes, absolutely. But this pair of adapters is pushing the bounds of possible at the stock price. On the positive side, they will charge a few phones and a laptop, at least mostly acceptably, sure. They are going to work. The question is, how long will they work for? Will I use these? No, not a chance. Can I square skip? Larger power adapters seem to be all about sacrifice. The anchor has a captive cable and not enough ports, but generally does good in testing. It's also expensive. The Ugreen self-destructs when the USB port randomly fails after a short period of time. So even the premium, by premium I mean the largest, brands. They are having issues, but by comparison to these, they look good. In fairness to you, Green, they did update the 300 watt model, and I need to check that out at some point. Hopefully not updated like some others. Makes it difficult to find the next great power adapter. Plenty of good. Damn near everything gets a good, which is a positive end to a few less than positive performers. That's about it. Two more power adapters. Let me know if one of these meets a requirement for you and what you think of these in the comments. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.